This guy accurately predicts the silver and gold price. As a matter of fact, his last two predictions were spot on for gold. We're going to cover that in this video. Who needs JP Morgan when you have Buddy Rumble, the Louisiana gold guru? But we've got a special surprise for you today because he has a prediction about silver by the end of the year. We might just be calling this the September silver Christmas present. Buddy Rumble, welcome back to Ron's Basement. Good morning, Ron. Good morning to your viewers. I uh, want to say hi to everybody. And so what's that behind you? Is that the, uh, does that happen to be the Louisiana flag? That's the Louisiana flag. All right. And the, is that the stork, I guess? That's the, yep, yeah, a stork, pelican, pelican. Pelican, pelican. Yeah. All yeah. right. On top of a on top of a golden nest, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's golden. yeah. That's yeah. Well, well, buddy, you have made two spot on gold predictions. I'm going to share that with our viewers right now. Back in, let's go over the first one. It was what back probably four or five months ago, you had a prediction about what gold would do in the June, July time frame. Do you want to share that with the viewers? Yeah, I mean, what I I did some figuring, thinking, searching, soul searching, and uh, my 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 feeling, educated guess, gold would go. We was up in April and May, and it kind of fluctuated down. And I and I I felt like, well, come June, end of June. Almost into July, it would go to 1900, and that's where it was at. I think it was 1901, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, I, I remember. I mean, I, I remember when you made that prediction, and I thought, "Oh no, buddy, what are you saying?" You know. Um, uh, and I and I want the viewers to realize this is showing that when Buddy makes predictions, uh, they can both be. You're not just a perma bowl, a permanent. You know. Oh, it's always going to go up. It's always going to go up. You you made a prediction, and I remember I was like, "Oh no!" and uh, and I thought, "Well, he won't be right." And uh, well, I was wrong. You were right. Well, I, well, at least it didn't go back to the the prior. I mean, what was it last year in October, September, October? Uh, gold was at uh, 1640 at the lowest between them. Yeah. And then it went up and we had to, you know, it shot up almost, uh, I think almost 2000 or 2100, all close. But, mm -hmm. uh, and we rode that, that, that high on that, you know, for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. And, but uh, I've, I've been kind of watching the gold and the, and the, or the precious metals period. <clears throat> for quite a few years now, at Le least hard for the last eight years mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, keeping a, you know, an eye on it. And they've got trends each year. And, but then there's a lot of things that I, that can, that I, I, you got micro issues that can raise or lower the, the gold. Yep. And then there's macro. And so, um, yeah, and you have charts and you have all types of, right? I mean, an, an unlimited amount of variables. Right, right. But um, the, the predictions I hit, I mean, now we're at, I, I predicted, uh, what, 1950 on Labor Day. And right, we that's was, your next. So I want to point out to people, that was his next prediction. This is right, that we would hit 1950 by, by Labor Day. And go ahead. You can brag if you want. Well, I don't, I don't want to brag because <laughs> you, you know, uh, bragging can uh, bring you down too. You know, that's that's. Uh, no, I know. Yeah, but I mean, um, I, I kind of judged some of this one this year, and it's kind of a running theory that I and I'm kind of looking at. But uh, I'm looking at the fuel costs. You know, these mines. Mm -hmm. Um. I, to back up, my, not if everybody knows my story, but I was in the trash business with my father that I worked for waste management. I was an operations manager for them for a couple of years. I know mining is not any, is not the same as waste hauling, but all your equipment is based around diesel. And, uh, you know, 
I, th I think that has some effects on the on the micro cost of, mm -hmm. of gold. When I was looking at uh, I was looking at the price of diesel. Diesel at in at the end of June was at three eighty national average, and as of Labor Day, diesel's na national or national average of diesel was uh, four oh five a gallon. And so I, I, you know, and these mining companies, they know this, they, they have as, as a good operations manager or general manager, you have to budget what you think things are going to do. And, and, you know, with uh, the nation uh, slowing down on, on drilling for oil, you know, Saudi Arabia, they cut their production back. And then I seen another, uh, where Russia is going to cut down on their production. So, I mean, that's going to affect the price of fuel. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then most, of, I would say probably the, the biggest thing with the, the, the gold industry is in the mining would be the fuel. You every, everything that they use, the big, the big uh, dumps, dump trucks. I mean, they're, them dump trucks are the size of two houses, you know, and that takes a lot of, fuel to run that dump truck uh, they're drillers they're loaders they're crawlers and everything everything's run on diesel mm -hmm. so that bulldozers. is they're, they're yeah bulldozer they're all yeah. that's that's a high cost to run mm -hmm. on a daily you know operation of mining you know so uh that's one of the costs you know when you look at your in a business fuel is something it affects your bottom line and you don't have no control over it. it whoever, yeah. Whatever they decide they're going to charge you for fuel, that's what you're going to pay. So do you, do you think in the long run, higher energy cost will, uh, will, will be related to higher gold prices? Is that, is that your, your well, idea? Gold and it? silver. I, I'm thinking, yeah. you see, they're talking this winter is going to be uh, cold, very cold. In December and January, and you, mm -hmm. there's a lot of places that use uh, they call it uh, heating oil or fuel oil or f heating fuel or whatever, but that's just basically diesel. You know, you get back on the East Coast and in the North, they use a lot of that to heat with. Mm -hmm. And watching the, you know, you kind of can look at it. I'm not going to say that our increase from 1640 up to two thousand dollars last year on gold is because of all of that we had we had some black swan events that increased the price of gold and silver and platinum but uh, maybe not so much as platinum yet but um i can remember last year in october they was talking about our res our reserve not our strict not the u.s's the government strategic reserve but they was talking about the uh oil companies or the fuel companies their reserves were at ver they only had like three weeks of su reserve supply now they kept mm -hmm. it going but i can remember around october november they was talking on the they was interviewing people back east in new york new jersey and uh the price of uh heating oil which is diesel or heating fuel it was it was, was skyrocket and they couldn't afford to even fill their tanks to get them through winter and um i think if the um if we get a start getting a cold winter in november that's going to drive the fuel prices up yeah now, coupled with cu cu oh, yeah. coupled oh, with oh. coupled with uh, a decrease in supply decrease coming from supply. russia saudi arabia i mean in the overall worldwide market it, you know it's so important to realize the oil market is uh, is so huge. I think it's it's a hundred times bigger than the gold market as a relative comparison. Oil is the blood of the world economy. Whether you're talking about heating houses, transportation, plastics, I mean, it's crazy if you dig into into oil and and the how it is basically. Um, it, it's just prevalent in almost any sector of the economy. So it's a big deal.
and it will yeah. it will impact the price of, of gold and silver and platinum for that matter as well. If you're looking to buy gold, silver, or platinum, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex, the online precious metals bullion dealer and sponsor of Ron's Basement. I was a happy customer before they offered to support the channel. You'll find they have the best prices, quality, and service. I think Pimbex is best, and you will too. And be sure to tell them that you're from Ron's Basement. I, I think that's. I think we're going to see some precious metals go up now. If we now have wait, a, wait, if, go ahead. I'm I sorry. Said, I just said I think the precious metals are going to go up, but uh, but if we have a black swan event, another two or three banks go down, yeah. it'll drive it up even higher. But, there, there's this prevailing uh, thesis that if the market crashes, if the economy crashes, that gold and silver are going to crash too. Uh, that's this, you know, because that's happened. For the most part in the past, that when, you know, we hit a big recession or if we have a big black swan event that the silver. But I, 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 I've i gone out on a limb and I don't think that that necessarily has to be the case, that, that we are in a situation now where we're getting much faster reactions. And based upon the fact that that the overall system has grown so much more fragile and delicate that we're getting yes. faster reactions and faster feedback. And I point no further back than, like you just mentioned, the banking, little banking crisis we had in March and April. That was an immediate response from the Fed and the Treasury, right? I mean, they got together That's over correct. the weekend and they, 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 they jumped on that. Like, they didn't let it fester for a week or anything like that. It was immediate. It was on a Sunday. And it was a form of money printing that they did, right? If you dig into it. So the to, to go on this premise that absolutely, if we run into a a black swan or even a gray swan, <laughs> you know, that that we've got <laughs> yeah. that we that we gotta go down. And I want to circle back to one more thing you said as well, then I'll take the microphone again, uh, is uh is is that you know, things have changed in a lot of ways. I mean, they really have changed in the last, you know, gosh, two, three years on many different levels. So, you know, I know history doesn't always repeat exactly. It rhymes. And and I think that in rhyming, it doesn't mean that we absolutely have to have this, this crash in the metals prices. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I kind of feel like it, all right, let's say the market crashes, the stock market or the world's markets crash. You got rich people that lose money. So if it loses, you know, if it does a, a real deep dive, they're still going to have money and they're going to start selling. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be looking for a place to put their money. And gold and silver is going to be where the, the, you know, so gold and silver at the initial crash may go down. But I do believe that the rich don't like to be poor and they like to make money. So they're going to put their money somewhere safe. And I yeah, think that's, yeah. they'll, they'll look at the gold and the silver. And, that, and that's what happened. That's what happened yeah. in March and April, right? Um, yes. That's what happened in March and April. And I think that one thing that's different now that it really is truly different. And even if we then go back to the, uh, the health crisis that we had back in March of 2020, that started then, um, one, one thing that's different now, even as compared to then, is that there is a, a way different, um, how do I say this, that, that possibly there's not as much confidence in the U.S. dollar as we had back in 2020, that, that, that there's been a shift, especially on an international basis, right? This de-dollarization movement, the BRICS movement, where these countries are like, you know, we're already losing because of inflation, losing money on our treasury, U.S. treasuries that we buy by investing in U.S. dollars. But now there's this weaponization of the dollar. There's a whole different macro landscape that we're dealing with. Unfortunately, because I'm a patriot, I know you're a patriot, you know, we're American, but unfortunately, the world looks at the dollar much differently now than it did three years ago. They look at treasuries different. They look at the dollar different. They look at Washington that we really, you know, uh, and again, you and I didn't cause that. And, hey, I'm an American through and through. But, 
the reality is the world has changed. It has. It really has. And and um, we're 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 swimming in uncharted territories because we, we you know we've never been at a at a level of debt the U.S. has like we have today. And then they mm -hmm. just go out and suspend the debt ceiling. Right. Um, so they're printing money, which the more money they print, it's going to make gold and silver or platinum that much more or worth more. You know, it's yep. going to drive the price up. Yep. Yep. Um, so what, what they, what they pass it on, was it 2025? They, they, um, suspended the debt ceiling. Yeah. Till January of 2025. Yeah. yeah till after the election, coincidentally. After the elections. Till after the elections, which is uh, very interesting and a point that a lot of smart analysts bring up, right? Like they didn't just raise the debt ceiling, they suspended it. And what is that telling us, right? You know, Andy Sheckman likes to talk about it. the reality is, unfortunately, the, 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 the powers that be don't ever really tell the public what's really going on. You got to piece the crumbs together. So what does that tell us that they suspended the debt, you know, another crumb? What does it tell us that the world central banks are buying gold at a record pace, right? You we kind of kind of right. put it all together. And by the way, to everybody who's watching right now, we are going to get Buddy does have a silver prediction we're going to get to here in just a little bit for Christmas. It's Buddy's Christmas present to uh, silver investors, but I think we're having an interesting conversation right now regarding this kind of big picture of what's going on uh, as it relates to, to to precious metals. Right, right, yeah. I mean, I can't beat a dead horse so much, but you know, stock markets. You know, you can put your four hundred one ks or your IRAs or whatever into the stock market, but those companies manipulate their earnings so much. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah i don't have no faith in the stock market maybe 20 years ago yes they but it's like the the sam bankman freed kid uh and well even even uh what was it uh silicon valley bank the regulators were supposed to be checking on that make sure this bank ain't gonna fail but they somebody just blew it off i mean so how much of this blowing off, you know, I'm not doing my job or I'm, I'm playing with my cell phone. Why do I want to go check on this? And, and how much of this not paying attention or doing your job is in the regulators, the FCC or the commissions and the, the people that regulate these stuff. You know, I kind of was sitting there thinking about it yesterday, you know, our corporations, not, not companies or corporations, which are traded on the stock market. You know, uh, they kind of take a, a note from uh, the government. You know, you got the government where you have the Fed that makes the debt and the Treasury makes the money. And then they can go out here and, and they can they can raise whatever they want to suspend the debt ceiling or have fights. And, and well, we're not going to raise it this high, but they will raise it that high or, you know, go back back and forth. You know, you look at the corporations. That's on the traded stock exchange. They're, they're, they follow the same suit as what our government does. You know, you have them going to banks and borrowing money, but yet they they show their earnings and they they they're on the they're, they're on the stock market and that props them up. So if they're not doing their job and somebody catches wind, then the damn thing goes like Enron. It just goes yeah. to zero. Yeah. And you're never going to see precious metals go to zero. Like there's only one thing I could say that would would bring precious metals to zero. And that would be an apocalyptic event if there was some asteroid or something heading to this planet and it's going to wipe us out like in that movie Armageddon or you know right. then then nothing nothing has any worth cuz we're all going to be gone but in in all Silver, gold, platinum, they never go to zero. You know, Enron can go defunct. FTX, you know, you, you can put your money in these companies. And, I, and you know, I, I imagine there's probably people out there that don't want me to say that, you know, but say that, but uh, this, but uh, the stock market is just a legalized form of a Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion.
you know, I don't. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think uh, in many regards, that is true. That is true. It's you're relying on somebody else. The because truth. when you look at when you look at the fundamental underlying values of a lot of the companies, a, a lot of the big companies, big and I won't name any, but when you look at the underlying what you're getting when you buy ten thousand dollars worth worth of the stock, a lot of it is just air. There's nothing air. there, right? It's when you when you factor the assets these companies have and offset that by the debt they have, you know, for ten thousand dollars, you might be getting three hundred dollars or a thousand dollars worth of assets. Um, I'm gonna circle back to something you said earlier. It it to a certain degree in the overall market. Now there's segments of the market, including the precious metals mining sector, where that's not necessarily the same case. Um, right, right. A lot of times, you know, they're undervalued. You put in ten thousand dollars and you're getting fourteen thousand dollars worth of assets. It's insane just because sentiment is so bad. But when you look at a lot of the name brand companies that you're going to see mentioned on CNBC and Yahoo Finance over and over, it's it's like fantasy world. I mean, it's really like fantasy world. And I have a degree in accounting. I can tell you that that in a lot of ways, especially with the banks, right? And this term, I first heard it after the great financial crisis because they they changed the mark. To, they're called mark to market uh, accounting rules. I think this is probably something that a lot of people don't want to hear but it's true and and because what a, a lot of these companies are engaged in was referred to as uh, Disneyland accounting you know i mean because it really is it's like you know it, it, you know at the end of the day any business is about cash flow how much cash do you have going out from your operations and how much cash do you have coming in on a monthly quarterly but because of the way the accounting rules are written at cash that basic cash flow from operations is severely perverted is what i is is about the best way that i can sum it up so yeah you know, I, I i yeah you say i call it creative accounting but uh yeah disneyland yeah disneyland yeah i mean i i like i said i worked for one of the big trash companies and and it's like um they owned a landfill and i was an uh, i was a uh operations manager over a hauling and so this company owned the landfill, the, the, the hauling companies, but they turned around and they took whatever I waste I put into the landfill, they charged it back to my, on my books, you know? So there's a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of things that uh, they, they play around with, you know, they, uh, they try capital, like in landfills, they can capitalize on the fuel for like cell development. And, mm -hmm. and they turn around, you got cell development and then you got production or working, you know, but um, they, they can go out here and put money from the fuel cost into cell development, which it should have been into operations or production. And so they, they play around with stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah I was, and then I they've was... gotten trouble for that, too. Oh, yeah. Now, I was talking to one of my neighbors, a lot of my neighbors work for big corporations. You know, we got a lot of big corporations here in St. Louis. And yeah, well, I was talking to St. Louis. Yeah, his, 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 uh, his, you know, he, he's like on a, he's like a manager operations level type person as well. And I was, this was a couple of weeks ago, but, you know, he was talking about the stress he gets put under now, not just at the end of the quarter, because it is like at the end of the quarter, like, like the, that these companies are, they'll do, they're like living quarter by quarter and will, um, will like, you know, try to force things into the quarter just so they can make their number. And it's like, and, and I said, it's, yeah, it's like, they don't, companies don't really manage themselves for long-term at this point, you know, it's become this, this like, oh, we got to do whatever we can to shove everything we can into this quarter. So the numbers look good. So the CEO gets his bonus was kind of the net of our of our conversation and yeah. uh it's interesting let's 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 get to your silver prediction buddy all right we've strung everybody along now i want to <laughs> remind everyone buddy predicted 
two two very accurate predictions for gold. But what are you 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 told me this about silver and uh, and again now this time I'm saying I hope Buddy's right. But what what are you thinking is going to go on with silver as we head into the end of the year? Well, I'm looking at silver will be 32 to 35 an ounce. Yeah, I'm a gold guy, but uh, now taking into effect, I'm, if if everything stays as it's going now, mm -hmm. I see come January, December, somewhere around there, that's uh, you're going to see uh, silver at 32 or 35. Okay. Well, we like that even better. So there we have it for everyone. $32 silver by Christmas. That's a prediction. Don't make any financial yeah, don't, decisions. Don't, buy, yeah. don't, don't make any financial decisions based upon what Buddy and I are talking about. Uh, don't adopt a puppy. Don't get engaged to get married. Don't do anything based upon what we're talking about. But there we have it. The official word, the official Buddy. And we're, and we're, gonna, we're obviously going to come back and revisit this because we'll have the Christmas special. Uh, yeah. And if we have thirty five dollar silver, buddy, I don't know, man, we might be flying you up here in a in a private jet. We'll have to see what what happens. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, you know, sometimes they say the third time's a charm and I'll lose it. You know, I might not get it the third time, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I feel pretty I feel pretty good that uh, we'll see it in the thirty dollar range. But I, I'm thinking probably thirty two. But now if we get a some kind of black swan event. I think it could drive it higher that with the gold and the platinum too. Yeah. You but, know, uh, um, I, I, I meant to say this earlier and it goes along exactly with what you just said. I think when we look at, this is just my opinion, but when I look at gold, silver, platinum right now, right. And I look at everything going on in the world right now, it feels like we're in the eye of a hurricane possibly, right? Like things have been kind of calm, predictable. We have not had any black swans or gray swans for the last, I don't know, four or five months feels like. If we just stay the way things are, I feel pretty confident about the gold price and the silver price, right? Like it's still going to do okay. But if we get that gray swan, like you just said, or that black swan event, or if the U.S. goes into a recession or if, you know, it, it, which I happen to think there's a much higher chance of occurring than the quote unquote professionals. But we'll see. But even like worst case scenario that silver and gold, worst case scenario being that nothing bad happens, that doesn't make sense. But I think you do understand what I'm saying for the yeah. silver and gold price. Worst case scenario is if nothing happens, that it does OK. And I think that we're in an environment now geopolitically, the debt, you know, financially in the United States, all, we could go on for hours where things are much more likely. The chance like crisis are happening uh, more frequently and they're happening more uh, with a higher degree of severity than, yeah. than than what we've had in the past heard something, seen something, and this one was new on me. But uh, up until 1873, silver was the, the, the money was based on the, or, or like how we, their, our dollar was backed by gold. Mm -hmm. Well, silver, the, the government up until 1873, the, the dollar was backed by silver. And in 1873, Ulysses S. Grant, I don't know if it was, I don't know if they had executive orders in or they was if it was an executive order or they ratified it with a vote with you know Congress and Senate and he signed it. But they said in 1873 they signed it into law, taking the U.S. off the silver standard to the gold standard. Yeah. And yeah. then, so you you fast forward 1971. So you got 1873 to 1971 with almost 100 years then they took us off the gold standard. Yeah. And we know what's happened since 19... Temporarily, buddy. It's only temporary. Nixon said yes. it was temporary. So, you know, apparently at some point here, we're going to go back. And I don't think most people agree with this, but I happen to think that you could make the argument, uh, and I think John Exter, former U.S. Federal Reserve uh, economist, would agree with me, although he's passed away, so we I can't get an official answer. But I happen to think that the argument can be made that the world never really went off the gold standard. No, that the no. world, the world as a whole, is still on the gold standard. If if it didn't, well, then if the if it if we was if the world was off the gold standard, 
why are they digging so much of it up? Yeah, and why are central banks buying so much? Uh, right. I mean, right. If, and if why did and why did anything, and why did and why did the 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 central bank of the central banks the uh, the bank for international settlements? Why did they change in with Basel three the the status of gold to a tier one asset, which right. is the highest level? Explain that to me. Right. I mean, again, it's the crumbs that we get. Right. But no, gold's a barbarous relic. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think I think, you know, I like to say that when Nixon, you know, in 71 took us off the gold standard, that it was uh, it was kind of like he put gold like in jail. Right. Right. You know, well, like, we talked like, about it was like a divorce. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or a divorce or whatever. But put gold in jail. Couldn't kill it. Couldn't give it the death penalty. Right. But put it in jail. And that now it feels like gold's in front of the parole board being kind of re-energized or re-recognized on a worldwide basis for what it's always been, which is, you know, a good base, stable foundation for the money, a good tether uh, for money to be based on. I don't know. Just just my opinion. Well, I, I yeah, I agree. But, you know, they really, you know, people say, well, they took us off the gold standard. Well, they, they you know, if it... If it wasn't worth anything, why do we have it sitting in Fort Knox or wherever they got it hidden at? You know, right? Uh, yeah. And then went yeah. and and it's the way I understand from my research because I was doing some research about that um, Nixon's uh, executive order on uh, taking us off the gold standard, how legal it was. But from my understanding, all that gold in '34 that they took from the people or whatever they had, and they and they moved it and put it. They pegged that, and it's still on the books today for like thirty-five dollars an ounce, Troy yeah. ounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They bought it from people for like twenty bucks an ounce, and then yeah, once they had it all, so that they could then print money. Basically, they revalued it. Uh, okay, the 30, we got all yeah, your... they revalued up to thirty-five, right? Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And that and what that did that effectively was allowed them to print money because right. they bought it at at twenty. And which it wasn't 20, but it was whatever it was, 22 or 18. I forget what it was. But anyway, they bought it at that level. Once they had it all, then within like, I think a month or two later, they said, oh, by the way, we're now revaluing gold. So that allowed them to think about all the gold they already had before they confiscated. They had a lot of gold. Then they confiscated all this gold. So they've got all this gold. But at that point, They'd paid whatever, $20 an ounce. So, so, you know, it was sitting there. They That didn't allow them. They had to revalue that all that gold, the old gold plus the new gold, to whatever extent they revalued it, that increase allowed them then to, that created all this new money to do the work programs and all that stuff during the Great Depression. Now, when it fast forward to 71, when Nixon found himself in a predicament, right, because he couldn't print money, but at the same time, we... there there was no more gold that he could he couldn't confiscate gold. They already they already played that card, right? It was gone. So the only thing he could do at that point is say, well, you know what? We just won't back the dollar with gold anymore. Now we can back the dollar with nothing, and right. we can make as much of it as we want. And we know how that worked out over the last fifty years, right? I mean, right. anyway, buddy, thank you. We're gonna we're gonna come back and revisit the the silver uh, prediction. <laughs> yeah. Boy, we're gonna by Christmas or January, but we'll we'll come yeah. back and revisit it because you've been very accurate, and uh, I think there's a lot of our viewers who are joining us that are rooting for your prediction. I know I am. Thank you for joining us. We love the Louisiana flag in the background. The Louisiana Gold Guru, Buddy Rumble. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon, okay? All right, sounds good. Well, thank you, Ron. And I want to thank all your viewers, too. You got good people. Wow, thank you. That And that, that uh, I'm sure the, the feeling is mutual. Like I said, they uh, they appreciate you giving us your time. We'll see you soon, buddy.